there are a few different options when it comes to integrating with Crowdin or the Crowdin platform. So today we're gonna to be having a quick look at some of those options for developers. The starting point for everything is gonna be developer.crowdin.com. So we're gonna head over there right now and let's get started. So this is the developer portal for Crowdin. This lives at developer.crowdin.com. We're gonna go over some of the basic things here, basically how to navigate these documentation and what integration you need for your use case. We're gonna start off with the capabilities here, the REST API. I think this is the one that most developers are gonna be using because this is programmatically integrating with Crowdin. We'll touch on the GraphQL API and webhooks, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about Crowdin apps, another very popular integration point. So if your goal is to synchronize files, connect with the Crowdin database, upload, download translations, manage your projects, all of these kind of things, you're probably gonna be looking at the REST API. And if I open up this section here, you can see there's a couple of links, first of all, to the API references. That's because there's a slight difference whether you're using the enterprise version or just the standard crowdin.com. But the API is kind of a, a standard thing if you are a developer and if you're used to working with APIs, they follow the open API specification. You can head over to the documentation. You can see a list of all the endpoints, the, the bodies, how to authenticate, et cetera. We'll touch a bit on that later on very standard stuff and very well documented. It's definitely worth also just going over the Crowdin API clients here. So Crowdin also have a bunch of API clients for their respective languages. And this basically is just kind of a wrapper around the actual API itself. This is definitely the recommended approach if possible. The API clients here actually give you some additional functionality. So they make life a bit easier. They add things like pagination, error handling, and some other kind of functions to make life easier for you. So if you are able to definitely recommend using the, the clients instead of the, the APIs, directly. One other thing worth mentioning about the APIs, Crowdin also have their own query language. This is kind of like a, a SQL syntax language. And this is basically just going to help you, especially when you're working with the source and translated text, so it's going to help you additionally query in that. So again, I'll leave a link to, to these in the description uh, below. So that's the REST API. So if we head over next, just to have a quick look at the GraphQL API. So the GraphQL API is only available with Crowdin Enterprise. So it's not in the standard crowdin.com. And this basically allows you to write more flexible queries, mainly to do with source and translated text again. So it doesn't have the full range of uh, everything that you're going to find in the, the REST API. And actually, yeah, it'd be a good point now to talk a bit about authentication. So the main thing you need to know is regardless of which API you're going to be using, there's two main ways to authenticate. So the quick and easy way is to, to get started with a personal access token. So as long as you've got an account, you can get a personal access token. It's got all the instructions on where to find that here. And you can kind of use that. The, the general recommendation is to use the, the OAuth flow, especially if you kind of have your own UI and you have people logging in, et cetera. Again, follow the documentation. It's gonna have it well documented on how to get started on both of these. And the final thing to cover here under the capabilities is the webhook. So this is kind of a standard setup for webhook events. There's gonna be a list of events here that you can listen for. And basically you can just react whenever any of these events happen. So there's a way to set up or configure your webhooks here. And then you're gonna have a list of all these different events. You can kind of see all the bodies that you're gonna be sent. You can take that information and basically do whatever you want with them. And just an additional note here, these APIs and these webhooks, whether you're building your own application or you're building an actual crowding app, they can be used anywhere. So not, it's not limited to your own programs. Great, so that's the capabilities covered. So let's head over and have a look at Crowdin apps. So Crowdin apps are gonna allow you to extend the experience that you have on Crowdin, on the actual Crowdin platform itself. So you can extend the actual UI within Crowdin or you can add additional file formats to the existing ones in here. So the, the general recommended way to get started is just to head over to this quick start here. And this is basically gonna walk you through essentially building your own app. You're gonna set it up as described in the documentation here. Then once you deploy it, Crowdin will essentially take your app and almost embed it into the actual UI in different spaces. So one thing to definitely note here is this UI modules. So if you head over into this overview, you can kind of see all the different areas within the Crowdin platform here where you can actually extend the experience. The other great thing about apps, of course, is that they can be shared. So whether that's within your team or just in crowdin.com in general. So you can head over to the store you can kind of browse all the existing apps and see if there's something that already fits your needs. So if I head back over to the documentation, as you can see, there are a lot more links and a lot more things I haven't covered in this video. This was just meant to be a quick introduction as to what kind of integrations are available and basically where to find them. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up there. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below or you can reach out to our 24 seven support team. So thank you very much for watching. Have a good day and I'll see you in the next one.